Hi guys. Hello Tech Talk Worldwide. Welcome again to our 52nd episode of Tech Talk Live. And today's special guest is Gemma Lambert. And online you know her as Gemma, Gemma Lambert Lewis and with the nail team. And so big, huge inspiration for me for many years. So I'm super excited to be able to bring her on live. I'm sure that every single one of you have already heard of her. If you haven't, oh my gosh, do I have like the perfect special guest for you today. Um, so yay, I'm excited. So hopefully Facebook will cooperate today. We'll be able to see comments and be able to uh, interact with you. So it's, it's always a hit and miss. Hi, Scarlett. Hello, hello. Scarlett, it's always such a delight to be able to see you because you as well as another person that we always look up to. And so thank you for being active in our groups and, you know, help mentoring us along the way as well. Hey, Gemma, I just sent you an ad, an invite. Hi, Rebecca and Nikki. Hi. Hi, Gemma. Hello. So here it's afternoon. So good evening to, <laughs> yes. to you. Good evening. So everybody, please give a special love and extra welcome to Gemma Lambert, who's joining us today. Hi, Scarlett. <laughs> and so Gemma, as we see comments or questions, go ahead and interrupt along the way. We want to answer and interact with as many people as we can and be able to use this hour to like get every bit of knowledge that we can away from you and just listen to how inspiring you are but to be able to listen to like what's next for you and all of that but let's kind of back up and figure out how you even got started in the beauty industry okay so um i've been doing nails now for 22 years um so i feel like a bit of an old timer now um but basically uh, my mum's uh nail tech needed a babysitter so I started babysitting her kids at the age of 15. But instead of watching the kids, I was more interested in watching what she was doing to the nails. <laughs> um, so I went straight to college and did a, like a 22-week um, weekend course at my local college. And yeah, the rest is history because I just I found it addictive from day one that I just loved nails and nail art especially. Yes, absolutely. So I've been doing this for 26 years and I agree with you. We're definitely like the old timer. Yeah. But don't you kind of feel like with social media, we're almost revived? Yes, definitely. Definitely. Especially with YouTube and yeah. Facebook. Yeah, completely revived it. It's great. That's actually, you know, before I got into some of the nail groups, you know, obviously I was on YouTube and that's where I first discovered you a few years ago. And I don't remember what kind of a tutorial you were doing, but from then on, I just kind of kept following in and checking in on what you were doing. And so, of course, everybody knows that I have this huge obsession with accents. So your <laughs> accent was one of the things that <laughs> attracted me to you. But, you know, have you ever gone back to some of your original YouTube posts and kind of went, ah! Oh, awful. Awful. Can't, I actually struggle to watch those videos back now, not just because obviously my appearance has changed, but because of the nails, they are so old fashioned now and people are still watching them and learning from them. And I'm like, no, stop, stop watching those videos. <laughs> I know, but you don't want to delete them because what you think that people might not be learning something from, we definitely are. And so I like—I think it's fun to be able to watch the growth along the way. And you're right. I look back at some of my old videos and I'm like, oh my gosh. Like, And so it's a good thing we just go with it and that we're real and we're just us and we don't have to go back through and try to edit and be perfect and all of that because it's not that way in yeah, the nail industry. I like people to be able to see that I've, my nail style has changed over the years. But the amount yeah, of people I'm that all of a sudden still don't realize that I'm still on YouTube, obviously under my own brand now. And when they find me, they're like, oh, my God, I've been watching you years and didn't even realize. Yeah. When did, how did you get started in the? So you were in a salon, but at some point in time, you decided to go to the next level. And so what was the next level and how did you take those steps? So um, I'd been competing for quite a few years and um, doing that got my sort of name in the UK known a little bit. And that's when initially NSI approached me um, to do some videos for those. 
um, which I did a couple, um, but they were just of my hands. You didn't actually see me at all. You just saw my hands and, and you heard my voice. And then um, Nao Nails got in touch and asked if I'd do a few videos for those. So I went along thinking that it was going to be the same. It was just going to be my hands. And there was this massive camera set up and he was like, you know, let's sit you down here. And I was like, no, I'm not going on it. Just my hands. And he was like, no, we want yeah. you to talk to the camera. And I'd never done anything like that. I didn't have a lot of confidence at the time. So I was absolute nervous wreck. And you can see on them first initial videos, I look miserable as sin because I'm so scared that there's this camera stuck yeah. in my face. Um, so yeah, it was completely by accident that I ended up getting into doing these YouTube videos, which now have millions and millions of views. And obviously Kirsty's now took over from me. So it's crazy. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. And so I, I think I looked at there, it was a few days ago and I forget like 32,000 subscribers and something like that. Like, yeah just an unreal amount of people and that's just on the one let alone the nail team yeah, that's just and so team. when you yeah and so when you decided to change over and do the nail team how did you get started with that um we me and a friend um actually wanted to set up a non product biased facebook page um and this is 10 years ago now um and we just wanted to promote people being able to use uh, whatever gel polish brand they wanted to use, whatever acrylic brand they wanted to use, they didn't have to stick to one company. And that was a bit new back then. Everyone wanted you to stick to one company and we just didn't want to do that. Um, so we set up the nail team and straight away it was a massive hit. Um, so it was from there really that the nail team went into education and then selling products for companies that we believe in and that we like and that we can endorse. Yes, absolutely. And so many of the companies will approach you, especially when they know that you've, you know, a com competition and they want to be known as an award winning product. And so therefore they do, they kind of branch out to you. So did you find that all of a sudden these companies were just like, hey, why don't you do this live with our product and we're sending you stuff? Yes, I get samples probably a couple of times a week now of people sending me things and ask me to try them and give them feedback and help them to sort of grow their brands and things like that. And I love that side of my job. So please keep sending. <laughs> yeah, okay. yes, absolutely. Exactly that. I didn't realize till a couple of years ago when I started doing more in social media that they really want you to do that. I thought that, no, they, you know, like I was a little bit closed minded because when you're stuck in your own area, you're not a part of the social media it seems like, like, no, I'd, I'd need to buy it. They would probably want to approve the video first and all of that. But once you start this trust with them and they know that you're going to spotlight them in, in a correct manner and you are using the products correctly and you're prepping correctly, it is amazing that when you're willing to put yourself on social media, how many people want to be a part of that with you yeah. and watch you grow and help you grow. And so I appreciate like what you just said, the companies that do do that as well. Yeah, yeah. Like and they, so they know then you're, you're good at what you're doing and they can clearly see that you are about education. So they're happy for you to promote their products because you, you're promoting them for the right reason, not just because money or anything like that. Yeah, absolutely. And so when you go live, do you still get nervous? Yes, every time. <laughs> I've been to leave Me too. to teach a class and one of the ladies asked there, you know, do you still get nervous every time you're teaching a class? Yes. Every time. My, my, my biggest fear has always been, if somebody asks me a question I don't know the answer to, what do I do? And I remember the first time that that happened and I was like, I don't know, but I'll get back to you. And then I did. I made sure that I got back to that person and answered that question as soon as I knew. And that sort of fear went away a bit, but I still get nervous every single time. Yes. And of course, you never know where just like with this, we're just kind of winging it and going to ask any questions as they come up. So, you know, there's always that nervousness. We just did a 50th tech talk um, a couple ago and Becky wanted to turn the tables and interview me. Okay, I've done lots of interviews, pop up lives, tutorials, YouTubes, all of this not gotten as nervous as I did that day. And I don't know why I think it's just because I'm used to being in control of what I know that it will kind of guide you. 
and I wasn't sure. And so I appreciate, I understand a little bit more on the other side of you guys coming on as interviewers. And I appreciate that even though you're nervous, you're still willing to come on and, and share your knowledge with us. Definitely. Definitely. I think Scarlett said yeah. earlier that you were a pro now at it, Gemma, but I have done obviously hundreds and hundreds now, but still, every time you still get nervous. Yeah, so true. So very true. And so tell us a little bit more about the nail team. Um, okay, so the nail team now, um, I have um, 10 educators um, that are all over the UK. So we cover the whole of the UK. We've got another three starting in October, which is a new piece of information. That's the first time we've told anyone. Oh. Um, so yeah, we'll have 13 by the end of the year. Um, they all teach courses that I've sort of sat and designed over the, the last God knows how many years now. Um, we are a product wholesalers as well. We sell so many different ranges. Uh, we sell crystal nails, glam and glitz, NSI, Halo. Uh, we have our own range of nail art products. So we still remain in this non-product bias company, but being able to endorse products that we know work and are good and that are safe to use and that give the job that you actually want them to give. Um, so yeah, we're training and wholesale mainly now. Um, and I've sort of stepped away now from doing clients, which is a little bit of a relief. I still do the few clients just to keep on top of like being able to take photos and things like that. But other than that, it is just training and products now. Oh, that's so exciting. That's hard to do. I mean, I've, I moved um, about two years ago and I did most of those clients were 16 to 18 years that they were my clients and uh, they still come to me. It's hard to let go of that it because is. you do because create they a become relationship. your friends over that amount of years and being able to sort of say, yeah. I'm really sorry, but my career has moved in this direction and I'm going to have to pass you on was not nice. And a lot of them were really like upset by it, but they knew that I'd trained these girls that I'd pass them on to. So they were going to a good tech. Yes, absolutely. So you have this vision set. Is there something else that's coming up that you like? Do you actually sit down and visibly write these goals? Or do you still kind of wing it and just kind of let things happen as they come? Um, we have sort of set goals that we that we want, but then things just come up. Um, yeah. For example, Halo. Uh, we never expected to take on another brand. And then last year, Halo approached us um, to take on their gel polish brand and then develop their acrylics and a couple of other bits that are coming out soon. Um, so we've been working, me and the educators have been working hard on getting that done um, and getting those ready for launching. The acrylics just come out. It's been a fantastic success. I'm very happy with how that's gone. Um, but we never expected to add that into our list of jobs to do. So um stuff like that pops up and if you think i can't say no to that um I, going to america a couple of weeks back for example when tony uh, lie asked me to go it wasn't something that was scheduled into my diary but i made sure that i could squeeze that one in because i wasn't refusing a trip to america to go and uh, see all the nail techs over there so yeah we have things that are definitely planned and done on paper and we know when and where we're gonna do them but then other things tend to pop up and we just squeeze them in somehow. My yeah. mum and my husband so, would disagree with me right now, but. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but it's so true. It takes our family to support us and we still have to put them first above all of this. But it's so easy to get lost in all the people and all the social medias and all the shows and all of that. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so do you still compete? Um, I'm not allowed to compete in this country anymore. Um, I've won uh, 12 UK titles and have over 50 trophies in my cabinet. So Denise, who runs the majority of the UK competitions, has sort of said, that's enough now, Gemma, you're not allowed anymore. Um, so yes. I don't compete in this country anymore. Um, I do, the business competes, we put the business up for awards. So we've won um, business of the year and we've won things um, in scratch, like I won um, nail services um award for scratch so things like that are still competing but i really thoroughly miss my on the day pink and white competitions and nail art competitions so eventually i would like to go international and, and do some more competitions international 
but at this moment in time it's just squeezing bits like that in <laughs> and I'm still in when you're my team week, so I'm sort of pushing them as well as as trying to find ones for me to do Yes, absolutely. Well, congratulations on all of your wins. They're well, well deserved. And so it is, it, I understand why they put a cap on it so that they can allow other people to come in as well. You can't win them all, no. they say, but you did. And so congratulations on that. I can say that out of all the awards that I've won, getting the nomination for the business of the year was actually my favorite one. And because it wasn't just based on something that was like a one hit wonder, it was based on something that I had worked on for years. Yeah. And and so I, when you just mentioned that, every time I hear that, I always get goosebumps because it's the one that meant the most to me as well. So congratulations Thanks. on that as well. That one and the services for the nail industry one was, they are my two favorite awards because for people to appreciate what I've done for the nail industry was just, it was very heartfelt. It was lovely. Yes, absolutely. So Yvonne wants to know, what's the biggest tip for a new nail tech and a, yeah, a seasoned nail tech? Um, that could go so that can go so many ways. Yeah. <laughs> My biggest tip for new nail techs is to not run before you can walk. Um, because of social media at the minute, yeah. everybody wants to be able to do new shapes, acrylic designs. They want to be able to do all these amazing things, but they need to do the basics first. So you've got to do the basic structure and shape before you then be able to start expanding into the other forms of art. And a lot of them tend to try and run before they can walk and try and do these gorgeous nails. Um, and unfortunately, they've not got the structure there to be able to do the artwork on top. So definitely for new nail techs, don't run before you can walk. Yes, absolutely. And then, so I'm glad that you could answer that because I would be a little bit fumbled because there's so many things that went across my mind. <laughs> and, so, and so what about seasoned techs? Um, season text, um, I would say never stop learning. Um, I still personally go on courses three, four times a year. So you never, ever stop learning. So as a season tech, keep going, don't stop learning, keep pushing yourself so that you don't get stuck in a rut doing the same designs over and over and over again. Keep pushing yourself so that you get better. Absolutely. And so, you know, we've noticed, and, and I've kind of done the same thing, we've noticed that a lot of the trade shows aren't what they used to be, and it's hard to get some of the education, or you're having to pay to go to the trade show, pay to enter it, if you're going to compete, pay to that, and then you pay again to get the education. So sometimes, you know, we have to find out what we're doing. So online, we've been able to do a lot with education through YouTube and all of that. And then workshops, are you offering any online workshops or any upcoming workshops? Um, yeah, um... For the first time, um, we are going to be doing a summer school online. It's the first time we've done this, so I'm rather excited about it. Um, um, we've got 16 different courses on offer throughout July and August with myself and also a couple of guest educators as well. And if it is successful, it's something we want to repeat every summer. Um, so, yeah, they're three hour long courses varying from acrylic design to plastiline um, to cloincene so some of the newer stuff as well as the more traditional forms of art um, and it'll give people a taster of maybe where they want to go with their next course um, we don't think that they will take over actual class courses because you can learn so much more hands-on with somebody there watching you but at least it will give you a taster and maybe see if that's a, the route that you want to go We've also got the membership section on um, our website, which is existing already. It started back in January. And um, they are videos, uh, normal speed videos, not speeded up or anything like that. No music going on in the background, not like YouTube videos. Normal speed educational videos where I take you step by step through exactly what I'm doing um, so that you can learn new techniques or you can um, like crispen up your technique that you're already doing. So we've got those sort of two forms of online education at the minute. So yeah, it's good. 
Oh, that's exciting. And I love that it's still new so that what people will be like, oh, well, I've missed that or whatnot. This is innovative. And, um, you know, and even the people that do travel to the shows, they still find online courses to do because like I teach them as well. And it's amazing sometimes that people are like, I've never been to a trade show. I'm like, why not? Because what you learn there is far more, you know, than anything else. But at least they have options. You know, sometimes maybe we have babies at home and we can't travel or sometimes the funding isn't there. And it allows us to do that. Yeah, we had a one girl uh, message the other day saying that she was so excited because she is like the only caregiver to her little girl and she just physically cannot get to our courses. So at least this way, she's still learning some of our techniques. So yeah, for those sort of people and international, I have people obviously over in America and and Canada wanting to learn from us, but for them to come to a course here would be very expensive. So they can do the online ones as well. I'm working on it, though. I'm trying to get over to the UK, and I will definitely be looking up your courses on those dates that I can go. We're looking, actually, for 2019, so it's it's happening. Yeah, and so I know this is a little bit off topic, but I don't want to bypass this question because it's really good, but Vivica wants to know, how do you build your clientele? Um, originally, obviously back in the day, um, I we used to do leaflet drops and we don't do leaflet drops anymore because it's all done on social media now. Um, I still like some of the old fashioned techniques of leaflet dropping and recommend a friend and things like that because I don't think you can go wrong with them. But nowadays, obviously, social media helps you to grow um, a lot faster than what we ever could back, back when I was having salons. Um, but I yeah. think word of mouth is still going to be the best form of advertising. So if you can get one client and then you can get them to recommend to their friends, that is the best way to build clientele up. It's word of mouth, definitely. Absolutely. And you know what? You have to put yourself out there. I always talk about like if you go into a coffee shop, you don't just like, and so you look at your social media the same way. But if you walk into a coffee shop, you just don't walk up to people and just have your nails like this and then that's it no caption no hello no greeting and so we have to remember that when we're doing social media marketing that we need to have that business page that has our hours maybe a picture of the salon and all of that and then we need to have a greeting hello these are the products that i offer this is how much time it takes show before show after get your portfolio going because even if you met somebody in a coffee shop the only nails you have to show them at that time is yours. So if at that time you can say, I invite you to come to watch, look at my Facebook page and show them the, that you have and show them your open book portfolio, that's your next step. And so you have to be able to be ready. So have your business cards ready, have your portfolio ready and all of that. I think that's I actually have a workshop that beginners that don't also realize is that when you start a business, you start a brand you are that brand and you have to have like things like logos um, and branding done so that everything is uniform and your business page looks like a brand and not just like the, you don't want photos on there of a drunken night out or maybe of your pets or something like that. It's got to be a business page and it's got to be solely used for that business. And every image has got your logo on. So people see that it's clearly a business to you and not a hobby. Yes, absolutely. You got to be professional yeah. about it. Yeah, we have a um, a workshop starting. It's actually on Thursday. It's called Get Branded, Get Used. And it's exactly that. It's how to get started on that. Yeah. Because like what you said, you have to have the foundation of the nails. You have to have the foundation of the business. You They have to you know correlate together. So do your homework and get it done. Get yourself promoted out there. Then the clients will come. And you'll find that they kind of come naturally because like you said, word of mouth. Yeah you know, they're going to be like, you have to see this page or you have to stop by the salon. And, you know, the branding is so important. Definitely. Yes, absolutely. He's just, um, he's just finished college doing um, graphic design and he wants to get into design work, um, working on social media, photography. And I've just had exactly the same conversation with him is that he needs a brand now. And he's like, but I don't know what I want my logo to be like. And I'm like, that doesn't matter too much. My logo has changed maybe four times now. It's always said the nail team, but it's changed over the years. I've tweaked it over the years until I was happy with it. So I was explaining to him, as long as you start with a brand, you can expand it and change it slightly over the years as long as it stays recognizable. 
Yeah. Have you found that you've always stayed with certain colors? Yes. <laughs> always stayed with pink That's and purple. You. Always. That's usually what I find is that when I look at even like people who've been in the business and even if it's not nail related, they've stayed like Walmart has always stayed with the same yeah. color blue, but the font might change, you know, a little bit of the starburst or whatever. So when you follow some of the big box stores of what they do for branding, you'll notice like even Coca-Cola and Pepsi, they've stayed with the same colors and maybe the same font, but they've rebranded themselves multiple times and like reinvented themselves. What's fun though, is is sometimes go back and go back to retro, like go back to one that you did years ago in the seventies <laughs> and bring it back up. You know? Not well, that we were alive. Been doing the sort of, uh, business side of it for me, the social media side of it for me, he created a new banner for the uh, nail team group the other day and it had a pink splash at the back of it, which is actually what my first original logo had. And I fell in love with it straight away because I was like, oh, it's gone back to the old days. It's really pretty. So I've told him to keep that one on for a bit now. Oh, it's so true. Oh, that's awesome. So let's see. Karen says, Gemma made this a hobby for me at first, and now it's a business and a branded one with a logo. Thank you, Gemma. You're welcome, Karen. I have found a lot of people have said that, that from watching the Nao video, to obviously go and get educated and do this properly so I'm glad that I inspired people to do that absolutely and obviously many many people have you inspired so where do you go for inspiration um I have a couple of um nail techs that I really do follow um more everything nature fashion packaging i can walk around asda and see packaging and think that would look really good on a nail and i'll get my phone out and start taking photos and my husband's like oh my god she's got a phone out again but it's i just see a print and think that that on its own would look really nice on the nail or even last week i was taking a photo of somebody's trainers <laughs> It's so true. Anything. Though. Like, Anything. even if we go to, like, here's from, yeah, here's from a coffee shop, just the idea of, like, those leaves, maybe even browns, you know, we always tend to do so much with color that sometimes it's nice to yeah. take a different, you know, step back. Yeah, I find a lot of clothing. When my clients come in with clothing, it seems like that's my biggest inspiration for some reason, just mimicking what they're wearing. Like, every time we have uh, London Fashion Week, which is every uh, February and October, as soon as it's finished, I'm straight onto Google and starting looking at what prints are going to be coming up for the next season so that I'm sort of forward planning what colors to bring out and what um, glitters to bring out and things like that so that I'm always trying to think slightly a few months in advance. Oh my gosh, that's a great, great idea. You know, I have found that instead of buying, you know, every, every six months or every season, the product lines come out with a whole new color collection. Yeah. And so in the beginning, you're buying all of this and you find out that some of the colors are similar, you know, to the last season or whatnot. And then you have different brands and it just gets overwhelming. So what I had started doing was realizing that some of the colors I was ordering in, in Wyoming, where we live, which is definitely country, the colors were not getting used. The yellows were not getting used. The oranges were not getting used. And so I started going into the local clothing stores and figuring out what colors they had. And so like this last year was a lot of the muted, you know, the muted plum, like what a matte plum would be, um, the denim, the greens and stuff. And that's the color lines that I have always gone with is what's in the clothing stores yeah. tied in from fashion. Yeah, because and it's worked out really well. They want to match the nails up to what clothes they're going to be wearing predominantly. So watching fashion is is a very good way of knowing what colors are going to come up yes absolutely so as always you guys know that we're going to put all of the links to link into Gemma's website her youtubes and all of that in the comments but we have her here for a while to ask questions do you guys have any questions anything that you want to know a little bit more about her one of the things that I wanted to talk about is you know it's always hard to juggle family you know, friends, night out with friends, dates, kids, and business. And it, not only did you have a salon, but then you had an online business and the social media. Did you ever find that it was it was difficult? Did you schedule it out and, you know, do an itinerary of your day? Did you just kind of wing it? How did you juggle all of this? 
I think the battle of home life and work life, I struggle with probably every week, every week. Um, I have three kids. Um, Ryan's 18, Ethan is 11, and Reed is two. Um, and I, I genuinely don't know how me and my husband can get through it at the minute. Um, my husband works for me, as well as my 18-year-old, as well as my mum. Um, so family is very, very important um, to have that support with my family. I wouldn't have been able to do the things that I've done without them. Without my mum and Matthew having the boys every time I'm travelling, it would have been impossible. Um, but in regards to scheduling, I'm a bit, I'm a bit rubbish. Um, I have to admit, like tonight is actually um, my 11 year old's uh, parents evening and I'm sat here. So Matthew's gone. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I'm a bit rubbish at stuff like that, but, um, the kids are really great. They really understand that I, ha I do want to put a lot into this business and they understand that it's for them to then take on when they're older, even though the boys, they still understand business and they still understand that this is a thriving business that they could take over when they're older. And that's why I'm working so hard now so that they can have things that I never got. Um, and we can take them places that I never got to go and things like that. So it's still a challenge. And like I say, without my husband and my mum, I would be completely and utterly lost, completely. Yeah. Absolutely. And did you find that even in the nail industry, you kind of had to create a family with them too and a team? So, you know, even though your mom works for you, it might be one of those things that, you know, she's still mom, so you still have like the mom employee side of it, but then the friends become your family as well in your Definitely. team. Definitely. They really do. They really do. I've just seen Scarlett's comment. When is my long nails coming back on? <laughs> She's used to me having really long stilettos on. Um, but while Reed is potty training, unfortunately it, it's a no go area. So as soon as he's potty trained and we are getting close, they are coming back on Scarlett. I promise you they will be back. Because I miss them. What, what is your go-to shape on yourself? Stiletto. Stiletto all the time. I love proper, long, thin stilettos. So, yeah, this, this um. is really boring for me. <laughs> and then Vivica wants to know, what teas do you drink? Teas? Oh, no, I'm a coffee girl. I'm a coffee girl all the time. The funny thing is, um, I didn't like tea or coffee. Um, the only time I actually drank coffee was when I was pregnant. And then since my third little boy, um, I wouldn't be able to survive without coffee now. So coffee girl. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, and uh, well, did, I guess to answer her question in another way, do you put creamer in it? We don't really do you do like food. Yeah, we don't really have creamers in England. Um, we do when we go over to America or to Canada. Um, we do. We always have creamer in it. But in England, we don't really have creamer. So it is just milk or nothing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. I have to tell myself no creamers because it's unwanted calories. <laughs> but they're so good. But they taste so much better over there. So I get why you guys have that. But no, we, we don't have it over here. Yeah. <laughs> so Samantha says, how do you switch off? I can't find the time where I'm not working in a salon, teaching, answering questions, and online orders. Do you have? Do you ever have a switch off? No. <laughs> um, most of the people who know me well will know that I am generally still on social media at one, two o'clock in the morning. Um, I'm very much a night owl. Um, I work till silly o'clock at night, and then I eventually I get to the point where I'm that tired I have to go to bed. But even then, I'll lay in bed and I think. I'll just write that down. I'll just make a note of that. Don't forget to do that tomorrow. So I'll just make a note of that. So my phone is constantly like going on notes um, until eventually I just fall asleep. And then the next day I'll wake up thinking, what was it that I needed to do? And if I've not wrote it down, I'll get angry with myself for not remembering. So my phone is full of notes. And no, I struggle to switch off. I've tried the whole mm -hmm. finding a hobby thing to try and switch off. Um, and this year I sort of went back to doing um, kickboxing, which I used to love. But unfortunately, I've had a horrendous problem with my back this year. So I've had to like put a stop to that for a bit until my back's better. 
and I can't wait to get back to it because that's the one thing that for that hour while I am punching the life out of that punch bag I can switch off for a bit <laughs> that's the only thing that seems to like help me to switch off something completely active because isn't it so true like I had a little side business where I was like I don't know taking trash to treasure I called it shabby chic boutique and it was a great way to release but all I did was find new nail art you know inspiration yeah. <laughs> like along the way I'm like oh, I should do this on nails I could not disconnect I, I never have been able to disconnect however my husband and my kids very much tell me that I have to disconnect from my phone and from social media and they know that I can't do it for a whole day. It will actually become like a nervousness for me. Like you guys do not have a clue how many people I have to respond to on a daily basis. Do not make me disconnect for too long. But I also respect that, you know what, that's my family. And what I'm doing online is all volunteer. It's all fun. And so what I have to do is put them first. And so um, I will, I'll put my phone away and I tease the girls in our admin group because I encourage them to disconnect. Like I have to put it in the salon, in a drawer, out of sight, out of mind. And I know where it's at. And the whole time it's in the back of my mind. I can't do it. It's, it's become a joke in our house, but I do respect my family and I do disconnect. Well, just this year, and it, it is literally just started this year, my husband has made me just one day out of the weekend, either a Saturday or Sunday, go out for the day with the boys and do something. Um, and that is, for that reason, is to just disconnect. I'm still occasionally checking social media and just answering any questions, but at least I'm out and, and I'm not like at the salon tidying or organizing or anything. I'm out and I'm with them. So yeah, we've been enjoying that this year. Yeah. And Gemma, we all have to be reminded sometimes that it's okay. We cannot answer every single message that we get and every comment on our YouTubes, every comment on our social medias. Like it's okay. People understand. They're so appreciative when we do take the time to respond to them. And I think that that's what keeps us fueled and keeps us passionate and we want to help. And so just know that it's okay. All of these people watching will totally understand. I have got an amazing admin team on uh, the nail team group's got 28,000 nail techs on there now. Um, and the, all the educators are obviously admin, but I also have a couple of extra admin on there and they are brilliant. They really do help me so much to control that group and make sure that everything gets answered and responded to. So yeah, they are brilliant. Yes, absolutely. Like what we were talking about earlier, even though it might not be your family, it's a team that is that you've developed and they become your family and that's they follow on with the passions. But obviously you're good at supporting them and their passions or they wouldn't be following you around. So it's it's really cool that and I've seen a lot of the videos and, and a lot of your team where they're like they still get to be, you know, inspired and fun and it's not just always what you're telling them to do, that you're allowing them to be themselves and to grow. Well one of our sort of hashtag things is it actually hashtag nail team family because that is absolutely how we feel about each other um gail is definitely our mummy bear she sort of mums us all which is great she organizes us which is fantastic and then they they all play a role in being this sort of part of this nail team family and we get on amazingly so when we do have get togethers like we've just organized we've just booked we're very organized the christmas party <laughs> And we're all so excited and it's not till December, but we're all so excited to have a really good get together and have a good drink and a good dance. And But that's just what we're like. Every time we get together, we have a really good laugh. So yeah, Gail's there, bless her. Hashtag nail team family. Definitely. Yes, absolutely. That's wonderful. Oh, it, it gives me the chills. I love that. Um, so tied into Christmas, Tina actually has a question that says, what colors would you say are going to be the big ones this winter? Um, burgundy is back. I'm happy. I love burgundy at Christmas. So burgundy is back, which is really good. Um, chromes are still going to come back in this Christmas, which we had, we've had them for the last two years, but apparently they are still coming back this Christmas. Um, and then silver is going to be the highlight color rather than gold this year, apparently. So I'm happy with that as well, because burgundy and silver are one of my favorite combinations. So I'm happy. Yeah. And it's been a while since those have been around with the burgundies. And burgundies can be fun because you can do them as matte, too. They're yeah. beautiful as matte or yeah. as gloss. So. Oh, wonderful. Well, that's awesome. So we have just a few more minutes here with Gemma, and I think we've caught up on all the questions. As you well know, we'll go through on the replay for that. And so, Gemma, what 
you said that you've kind of written down some goals. Do you have any goals of what you want to share? Like, you know how they always say, like, where are you going to be five years from now? <laughs> um, we would like bigger premises. We are, we've been looking for nearly two years now for bigger premises. Um, the problem is that the, where we are situated is so ideal. It is just off a motorway junction. Uh, there's loads of parking. Um, it's perfect where it is. It's just not big enough. Um, we need at least double the size. Um, and so I've been really trying my hardest to find somewhere um, or work out the space a bit better or something because not only do we want to expand with the nails, um, but we have a beauty therapist educator and a makeup artist educator. And they are limited to what they can do because of the space and because it's an, it's an open training centre. So there's only so much beauty that they can teach. So we are desperate for a bigger space. So that would be one of the number one things that is on our list to do. Um, and then the second thing that we want to concentrate on really in the next year um, is building our education team um, in regards to we want them to do more competitions, go international and do more competitions um, and travel more teaching, um, which I've done for years and years and years now. And I would sort of like to take a little bit of a setback and push the girls um, forward with the with the national education and then make, hopefully international education. Yes, absolutely. That's wonderful. Do you plan on extending your team out to be some of the U.S. and other countries as part of the nail team? Well, that was sort of why I wanted to go to America with Tony to see what the industry is like over there. Um, and it, I have to admit, it was completely different to what I expected it to be. So I've come back and sort of know what I need to work on now to cater to the American audience because it is different to what the UK audience want. Um, so over the next year, again, we're going to be working on that. Like not one person asked me about Facebook. Every person that I did a nail demo on asked me about Instagram. And we don't do a massive amount on Instagram. Mm -hmm. So I've got to work on that over the next year at least to, to start building on the American audience so that hopefully we can go overseas and start shipping products over there and getting educators over there as well. Yeah, I kind of had to just get into Instagram as well. I was doing an online workshop and I was promoting it. And this, this guy messaged me and he was like, well, I only see a few things on YouTube, which my YouTube is more based on, you know, the Tech Talk Lives. And then there's some, you know, tutorials on there. And he goes, so I've only seen you on YouTube and Facebook. And I'm like, well, I have a website. But then I'm like, I'm not very active on the website. And he goes, and you don't even have an Instagram. And I thought, oh, gosh, I have to have that too. Yeah. And so guess what? Now <laughs> I have an Instagram. <laughs> and uh, you're right. Sometimes there's so many out there, but just like with nails, find one that works best for you. What is your market? Because your clientele is more going to find you through a Facebook than an Instagram. Instagram is your portfolio of pictures. There's some communication. You can do some lives. But Facebook's going to have your hours. It's going to have your website. It's going to have things that you sell. It's going to have, you know, available openings and stuff. Your website is for selling. Your Twitter is for blogging. You like, there's so many out there and it's hard to I don't want all of those platforms. I want to master one yes. and be a part of a couple. And I think yeah. we definitely, as a team, we are definitely, definitely got a, a presence on Facebook. So it's now slowly that we need to work on these other ones. I mean, Twitter, we haven't even started with Twitter yet. <laughs> yeah. And now there was a new one. I forget what they called it. Um, I want to say Box. It's not Box, but it's something... I, I can't recall the name of it. And I was like, oh my gosh, now another new one to try to get I know into. There's like, but there's apps that you can get in there that like link them all together. So if you post on one, it posts on another and it posts on another. So if I put a video on YouTube, it automatically goes onto Twitter. But I can't say I ever check on that. Um, but then the downside to that is that my little boy decided to go through Peppa Pig videos and like them. And they got posted onto my Twitter feed. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> well, at least he chose a fun, good artist. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, that's so, that's so funny. And so, you know, my kids have absolutely no desire to be in the nail industry. 
And Kim actually did a live the other day where her, I think he's nine, I could be wrong on his age. He actually, you know, like did some nail art on one of her clients and they were live Aww. doing it. And so afterwards he was like, do men really, are they in the industry? Like, is this weird that I'm a boy doing this? And it's not at all. A lot of our big leaders are men in the industry, but my son is like, absolutely not mom. He's 24 years old now and he has no desire. Like even if I built up a product line, absolutely not. My daughter, nope, that's too much work, <laughs> which is not really because I'm passionate about it. But do your kids, do they want to be a part of the business? I mean, cause you're growing it and you mentioned that it's kind of for them as well, but do they really, do they, will they become nail techs? Um, none of them, I, well, I can't obviously speak for Reed cause he's only little, but Ryan and Ethan will definitely not become nail techs at all. But Ryan, especially the eldest, does actually understand the business side of this. And he sees, because um, he works here like full time now, he's finished college. Um, he's into the taking the photos. He does all my photo work for me. Um, and he, do, he builds the website and things like that for me. So he sees the business side of this business. Now, obviously, in... 20 30 years when I want to retire it will no longer be Gemma Lambert's nail team so by that point I would want to build the brand so it's the nail team and he can then take over um which yeah. he would love to he I keep trying to sort of push him to go and get a job somewhere and he's like no I want to stay here <laughs> like but I can't yeah. quite afford you <laughs> So just to go and get a job somewhere else. And he's like, no, I'm staying here. So I can't even get rid of him. So he's definitely interested in taking the business on. And I think it's because you've also, we were talking about like, um, you know, working within their strengths, their goals of the team. And so even with your own children, you're finding their passions and saying, you know what, you're good at this. And I'm going to encourage you to work on that. And that way you're not helping telling him that he has to do something else. And then it's not his passion. Well, the 11 year old's fantastic at numbers. So I could do with an accountant. So that's his job. <laughs> Uh, that's the one thing that I need to get. I have a lot of accountant clients that have helped me out over the years, but you're right. If I can get them, yeah. get my family, <laughs> be a lawyer, true family and, <laughs> yeah. chemist. <laughs> Wonderful. So somebody just asked on here, if you had a Snapchat by chance. Um, do you know what? We were talking about this today at the course. I have a personal chat Snapchat, you know, where you take like funny pictures of you and the kids and stuff like that. Um, and Ryan, set up um the nail team snapchat and i forget all the time to post on it so they did remind me today so it is something i'm going to try my hardest to remember to go back onto the nail team snapchat and and keep updating it another form of yeah. media to keep updating yes absolutely and you know what you're right there's some um some things out there that you can pay into that you can post on all of them but i still found that that was a chore all on its own as well yeah well, every Sunday I will yeah. sit and sort of do my um, adverts on my page for the whole week so that they're done. Um, but yeah, even that still takes, it still takes a good hour to get the whole week sort of planner done. Yes, and schedule those posts and stuff. So do you pay for any of the posts on Facebook? Do you do the um, sponsored ones? We've tried a few. Um, I wouldn't say that they've been particularly noticeably successful um it's more when we just do a tutorial or a step-by-step -step or a youtube that seems to be the most successful for us rather than the paid adverts yeah absolutely i found the same thing i still do it every now and then because it doesn't cost that much so i'm no. like oh i'm just gonna try it but yeah yeah and so you know one of the things that i'm always curious of is when people decide that they're going to go for youtube you know, we share it with DIYers as well as the professionals. And so have you found that there's a little bit of a struggle there? Do, do you do you wish it would have just stayed with professionals or are you happy that it's with, with a bigger market? No, I, I wish, I, I would love people to be able to understand that those YouTube videos are for professionals to improve or to inspire people to become professionals. I still... I still struggle with the, I want to give the education, but in the same breath, I don't want people doing their own nails at home by just watching one of my videos. Um, but even yeah. in that, we had um, a girl message us a couple of weeks back now from a college um, asking me some questions. And I said, well, 
make sure that you ask your tutor because they might say something completely different. And in, to be able to pass your exam, you need to do it the way that your tutor tells you. And she's basically told me that I am her tutor. They just put my videos on. They don't actually have a tutor. Well, that's not what the videos were for either. <laughs> the videos can yeah. help professionals improve, not teach someone the basics from day one. Because not on those videos do you go through the anatomy of the nail or diseases and disorders. So they weren't for that. Um, but inevitably, you know, DIYers obviously are going to watch them. So it's just we try as much as we can in education to say to them, this is how to do it, but we would like you to go on a course and get a professional qualification yeah. to do it. Yeah. I've talked with a lot of people like Susie Moscow and Greg Salo and, you know, a lot of them that have these bigger YouTube channels as well. And they all say the same thing. There was no way to hit the market that they needed to, yes. but they also wanted to educate the, the clients that these are the products that you should be asking for. This is the type of tech you should be looking for. So I appreciate both sides, but I, I find the answers pretty much the same that we wish that we could keep it just to the professionals, but there's not a way to limit that. And so, yeah. No, well, thank I mean, you. The YouTube for videos your YouTube. are obviously free to, for anyone to watch, but the membership videos that are online, you have to pay for them so that at least we know that, you know, it's a professional that's going to be watching those and that if they really want to improve their work, that they're going to actually pay for that education. Yeah, absolutely. That's what I like about doing face to face or online classes is because you get to personalize it to each person. So if they're struggling with just prep, you can concentrate on just the prep and what products to use for that. And, you know, a lot of people get because the industry has um, primer on some of the dehydrators is called primer and then also acid primer non acid. And so that's the one of the ingredients that get messed up a lot is that people are like, well, I did prime it and you're like, but that's just dehydrator. That's not the primer. And so, you know, that's the part in the industry where we get to help each other a little bit more fine tune it, that you get more of that on, in the professional classes. We yeah. have um, very interesting UK labeling laws. So for example, something can have up to 4% acetone in it and it doesn't have to tell you. So acetone free okay. nail polish remover might not be acetone free. <laughs> Hmm. That's always interesting on how they can do that with different things. Yeah. And you know, and there's more and more allergies coming out uh, tied into gels and gel polishes and acrylics and all of that. And so, you know, I've always had to take a step back because a lot of times it's not the product. Sometimes it's the alcohol. So we use the alcohol to prep the nails. It's in the pH bonds. It's in the, the finishing to remove the tacky layer. And we don't realize the contact with how much alcohol we have during a service. So the hand sanitizer at the beginning, the, you know, the sanitizer of your table at the end, let alone the service. And so I always ask them, are you sure you're allergic to the product or are you getting overexposed to like the alcohol, which isn't always disclaimed that it's in the product, even if it's a little bit. And so it can be very frustrating. Yeah. yeah. But I think, again, that also comes down to the initial education that that, that um, nail tech goes on, that if it's just, unfortunately, we have these sort of one, two-day courses in this country that then they are apparently a nail tech. Um, and they've not learned anything about any chemicals or overexposure, what even a primer does, what a pH level is. They haven't learned any of that. And they're off out into the wide world doing nails. So that's, that can be very worrying in our country. Yeah, yeah, so true. So Courtney says that she needs to have more kids. <laughs> <laughs> to pass it on to. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. So Tina says, I'm sorry, but that's awful. I agree, but most... But you must understand that the full elements of the beauty industry, these chemicals are dangerous, and they are. And um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And so... Gemma, it's been an hour already, and I could talk to you forever about every single topic and what products you like to use the most and what's your favorite colors and all of that. But the reality is, is that we just need to continue following you on your social medias because you are an open book and you do share yeah. your heart, your passion, your mind, everything openly. And so we treasure you so much for doing that and allowing even me, who's been in the industry for many years, to still be inspired and passionate. And you're just a go-to person for me for inspiration and so I appreciate that thank you very much yeah so I look forward to possibly working with you a little bit more um, I know that we have some product that um, we're looking at and so I'm excited about that 
Um, there's one little question. Vivica says, what's, what's coming after gel polish, the next trend forecast? Mm -hmm. I think gel polish is here to stay. Yeah. I, I think it's just whatever we can do with gel polish. Yeah, I'm glad that we have now moved forward because when gel polish ca first came out, I felt like the industry actually took a couple of years to step back because all we were doing was nails with gel polish on. Finally, people are now starting mm -hmm. to play again and doing things with their gel polishers. So we are now creating artwork with them rather than letting them take us back to just putting a flat color on because that's not me. I like my art, so much more expensive yes, to be able to play too. around. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, again, Gemma, thank you so much for joining in. We'll get the links to all of Gemma's uh, everything, social medias, into the comments here so that you guys as well can stalk and follow her as I do. And so, Gemma, again, thank you for taking the time out of your busy day, away from your family, away from your nail team and all of that to join us. So I appreciate yeah. you so much. Thank, thank you for having me. Yeah. All right, you guys have a great day. Join us on Thursday. I have Katie Barnes as our Tech Talk Live. And we're going to talk a little bit about our cruise that's coming up with John Hawk, where we get a cruise with the nail stars. And, um, and Katie's always a delight to talk to as well. And so um, we'll see you on Thursday. Thank you so much. Bye.